Hi, it's Noel Williams, June 23rd, 2020. COVID update, Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Sorry, I haven't been doing that many lately. I was in uh, the Black Canyon in the Montrose area in Colorado, then in Buena Vista and Crested Butte area. And I was not online most of the time. I did qu two quick posts, um, but it was great to get away from everything. It felt wonderful. And I have to say, this was probably the best 10 days in the world to miss the news and all the craziness and the statues being torn down and all that stuff. So I was glad I missed it. But there's big things happening with COVID, unfortunately, and there are things that were expected and we're gonna go over those today or tonight. Um, so the first thing is there is a surge. We were expecting a surge. It was predicted in April that we'd have one towards the end of June and towards the end of August, two little bumps. The bump we're having now is a little bigger than I think any of us expected. And there's a variety of reasons why it's bigger. I think the obvious one is though well, the first reason it occurs or was going to occur is there was going to be some waxing and waning of the virus and as lockdowns eased we were expecting a little bit of a bump up but the unfortunate um, events surrounding George Floyd and his um, murder unfortunately led to a lot of demonstrations and protests and that put a lot of people in confined spaces over several days in and that's really contributed unfortunately to the um, surge that we we're going to have over the next further week or two, and then hopefully it will start um, coming back down. If it doesn't, I think unfortunately we're gonna have um, some restrictions restored that none of us like. So let's talk about numbers for a minute. There's uh, over 2 million people in the United States with it, over 120,000 deaths in the world, uh, almost 10 million with 475,000 deaths. Uh, Oklahoma, unfortunately, we've gone way up. We're at 11,000. We've had a big surge in the last 10 days. Um, we're not surging like Texas that had 5,000 new cases yesterday or um, Nevada or uh, I'm blanking on the other state, Arizona. Uh, Arizona, and I think Georgia is also. Um, so big surges in a lot of those states going up in California and as expected because one, a little relaxation on the intensity, which you can't be super intense about restrictions for forever. And then the unfortunate um, societal issues that occurred and the the chaos and all of it has just then facilitated more COVID. Um, so that's then where we are right now. In Oklahoma, we're, we've had a bump up in hospitalizations. I think we've been down to as low as 40 or in the 30s. Now we're about 200 and we have more than uh, 20, I think 20 to 20 eight people on ventilators um, from my doctor friends who know that stuff who are involved at that level of detail um, and again kind of a bummer but what we we're expecting which is why I've been harping on the same thing we're gonna have COVID we're gonna get COVID and you got to be prepared um, by having your immune system ratcheted up because if your immune system is ratcheted up from nutritional supplementation, being outside like I am, doing things that are healthy, it doesn't mean you're not gonna get COVID. But what it means is you're not gonna get that sick for COVID or it becomes very unlikely you're gonna get sick from COVID. And that's very, very important. Why would you wanna get sick from COVID? So let's do the things we can to prevent since we're all gonna eventually get it or the vast majority of us. Um, assuming there isn't gonna be a vaccine that we're gonna to wanna to do or one that's even gonna be developed that's efficacious, which I'll get to. Um, and then let's talk about data. Some of you get very critical of the things I say not being based on data. So let's be really clear about it. Everything I'm saying is based on data. I can't help the fact you can't read. And so I post everything that I'm saying and so the hydroxychloroquine data is very clear and the summary article on it is by Harvey Reich. Dr. Harvey Reese. Oh, he happens to be the head of epidemiology at Yale and is considered probably the number one epidemiologist in the United States, minimally, and perhaps in the, in the world. So he has a summary article from the Journal of Epidemiology showing early use of hydroxychloroquine is phenomenally effective. It's phenomenally effective. We're not talking about hospitalized patient use, which that group, it's like the horse is out of the barn, okay? They've already had the inflammation. When you use hydroxychloroquine early, it's phenomenally effective at abbreviating the disease. And there's cutoffs in terms of in the first four days, by the first seven, by the first 10 when the symptoms occur and the effect is greatest, earliest. And it's the only, only medication that's been shown in clinical trials to do that in clinical reports, period. There's no other. So let's not go, oh, there's no data. There is data. And for those of you who think I should lose my license for saying that, read a journal article, okay? I'm sure you've said that to all the doctors or written, all the doctors who killed 
tens of thousands of patients from opioid addiction so they could make money. But no, you haven't. You're just mad because I guess I'm political or something. So hydroxychloroquine is really effective. But the problem with hydroxychloroquine happened today in our office. We had a patient on a telemedicine call who had an exposure. Her husband has COVID. She called and wanted to be put on uh, hydroxychloroquine or Plaquenil as we call it. Um, and so my nurse practitioner, the one who had her, was all nervous. She was like, well, this could be malpractice, Noel. We can't do, I'm not sure if I can do this. It's out of scope of practice. And I was like, no, no, we're fine. We're fine. You've bought into the baloney of the FDA. We can write anything that's FDA approved, that's regulatory authority. I have. They can't take that from me. I'm a licensed provider. So I can write for hydroxychloroquine based on science for this person. And the Korean data, which two, had 240 people with a primary exposure who got hydroxychloroquine, none of them got it. It was, I mean, a great paper. And as Dr. Rish has written, no, we start it, you start it. So we wrote it for the patient, obviously, and did the zinc pulse, because the zinc with the hydroxychloroquine is very synergistic. And as the NYU study showed, in the sick patients, when you added the zinc to the hydroxychloroquine and the um, Zithromax in the critically ill patients, they had a 50% reduction in death. And that's a publication too, for those of you who keep on thinking I'm making this all up. And I've posted that one too, but you have to find it because I'm not going to post it again. It's pasted, everything's posted on Facebook. So then let's talk about the FDA for a minute. So the FDA, again, if you're going to focus on believing the FDA, turn me off because you're an idiot, okay? The FDA has blown this. They've blown it. I mean, who came out 10 days ago, and I think it was the Business Insider when he was interviewed, other than Dr. Anthony Fauci and said, basically, we lied to the entire American public knowingly on March 2nd, as did the Surgeon General telling them, oh, you don't need masks. And we told them the whole month you don't need masks because we were worried that there wouldn't be enough PPE for the healthcare providers. So we'll screw you and tell you guys not to wear masks so you can facilitate getting COVID and then potentially dying of COVID versus trying to Pre preempt COVID infections by telling everyone wear a mask or a cloth covering or anything you can. They did that knowingly, thinking they were they were justified morally because their moral justifications are about themselves and their own entity, not about you. They don't care about you. They care about the FDA's perception and how it works. They don't care about you or they would have told us the truth, which I was telling you then, wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask. So now Fauci's like, wear any cloth face covering you can, wear a mask all the time. Totally agree with him on that. I'm glad he finally came around to admitting he was lying. And this is not the only thing he's lied about. So just keep that in mind. But the FDA has an agenda that doesn't have to do with best practices. They have an agenda having to do with their success, which is why they keep on pu pushing remdesivir, where there's no data showing outpatient effectiveness, even though they want to use it for that, and there's essentially no improvement in survivability. On the other hand, the FDA did come out with uh, data on um, dexamethasone, a steroid, which was another kind of error they'd made. They, that was somewhat based on China, but they had discouraged the use of steroids uh, in COVID patients. It turns out if you give steroids, just like you could for a bronchitis patient normally, it significantly ameliorates or, dis or decreases the disease event. So. I, that's good news. So if you have a critically ill patient, you put them on dexamethasone, about a third of them are going to get better um, compared to those who don't get It's about a 33% improvement in um, survival and getting off the ventilator, which is very important, especially as numbers are going up. So that's really the summary on the FDA. Pretty inaccurate information in the beginning. They're starting to admit it. They have excuses for it, but they knew they were lying. There's going to be more and more stuff like that, just like with the hydroxychloroquine and Dr. Risch's data, um, which clearly shows it should be used as in every outpatient setting as quickly as possible. And so that's what we do um, to help our patients and prevent um, disease progression, which is always our job. We don't want people to get critically ill. Once you're critically ill, um, Plaquenil it might not be that helpful anymore, or Zithromax. And likewise, um, Dr. Risch adjusted, addressed the American Academy of Cardiology um, and um, the NIH and FDA's total misunderstanding of statistics with cardiac events with hydroxychloroquine and Zithromax and basically went through all the data very efficiently and kindly and elegantly and basically said they are completely wrong and he's, he's kind of flabbergasted by it. 
is kind of the tone. But um, he asked them all in his paper to reconsider their recommendations and opinions on it since they're completely incorrect based on their very own data sets. But, you know, that's hard to have big entities correct themselves when they have ulterior agendas um, also. Well, what else am I going to talk about, Kim? I'm blanking. Uh, oh, children. Um, so who's getting COVID? It's not kids. We're at about 1%. Uh, kids under 5, about 25 or 2.7%, I think, um, in kids uh, 5 to 14. Um, no deaths in Oklahoma. I looked at the CDC death rate data um, today for children and adults and again uh, it's about a month since i looked at it for i think it was through june 14th or june 18th um, and again showing the exact same thing kids are just not getting covid in term or in terms of getting sick with covid and dying of covid um, so still incredibly low rates in children um, the update on the kawasaki version or kawasaki's disease the inflammatory rash again those numbers are staying low um, does seem to be a trend perhaps in African American children um, or African British children or however we would say um, people from of African descent um, in Britain or in America or wherever a little higher prevalence and perhaps a little bit higher in um, Asians also a little lower in whites um, so again extremely rare uh, but definitely uh, seems to be some correlation with COVID exposure, but again, it's like hen's teeth, and hens don't have teeth, not super um, common, and more, I think, something that pediatricians need to always be aware of for any post-viral rash, that it could be Kawasaki's disease uh, than specifically COVID. Um, kind of final notes, uh, I'll be updating you as we keep going. Um, expect further surges in the next uh, seven days because of the massive number of people that are together um, uh, in the prior weeks. Um, restrictions may be put back in place, which I don't think is super wise. I think we need to get more focused just again on masks and nutrition. I think doing some restrictions might be helpful. I'm not going to, I mean, whatever they may be, but I'm, the ones I'm dead set against, I think people need to have funerals. We need to let people say goodbye to their loved ones. Um, number two, I think church services need to be allowed. If we're going to allow funerals and demonstrations and things that are really important to one group, we have to allow things that are really important to the other because it's only fair. What's good for the goose is good for the gander because the other group starts getting frustrated and we need to all get along. And I, I think respecting people's desires is needed. I do would say though that any of those events require masks. Um, everyone, need to be, everyone needs to be on vitamins and you cannot forget to wash your hands. Washing your hands is so important. If you wash your hands a lot through the day, wear a mask, take your vitamins, your overall risk of getting really sick from COVID is very low. You can still get it when you're nutritionally repleted, but it's usually not going to be as significant. So zinc, multivitamin, melatonin, vitamin D, quercetin, um, which is in all kinds of vegetables, I think is additive because I've had a lot of questions. I don't think it's super important to use. But again, if you want to just maximize everything, um, I think you could add that. Um, essential oils. I mean, there's so many different things all of us can do. Um, I'll be updating you pretty much daily again because I think we're going to be in a touch and go situation a little bit to see what happens. Um, David Holt, our mayor in Oklahoma, did mention today that there is the possibility of some limits if we keep on surging. Um, I, I've really thought he's done a great job the whole time, so we'll have to be very, listen very closely to, hit, to him. He has a great advisory board with Tim Pearson from, Ed, uh, from Integris and many other good, smart community leaders and healthcare people. So um, in Oklahoma, we do need to listen to our, um, the mayor if he, in Oklahoma City, the mayor in Tulsa's been fantastic, the mayor in Norman's been fantastic. Um, so I think our mayors are doing great. Um, and so that's it for tonight. Have a wonderful evening and I'll talk again soon. Bye.